Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the IFR flight plan, taking our same route that we've done on the last two dead reckoning as well as pilotage techniques. So basically what we're going to be doing is uh, traveling from lovely Groton to London up to Hartford to Connecticut. Now lucky for us, uh, these things are much much simpler when you have simple logical paths you have to follow. The big thing for us in flying IFR is just absolutely making sure that the different techniques that we're using to actually go IFR are going to be easy to locate. So let's go ahead and get ourselves our handy dandy flight plan. We're gonna be traveling from Groton to Hartford. Now, when you're doing IFR flight plans, generally all you have to do is find the nearest Victor Airway that you can travel on. Fortunately for us, if you take a look real quickly, you can see that Groton New London has its own Victor Airway, the Victor 58 Airway. And you can see it actually takes us up to Hartford VOR. Now, one thing you wanna watch out for very carefully is to make sure this airway has no directional arrows on it. Taking a quick look at it right now, I notice that I do not see any at this time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just add these little elements to it. One thing that I really like about Sky Vectors, I can literally type in Victor 58, and it will actually load in this entire airway with all the waypoints into it directly, which is super duper convenient. Now, making things a little bit more complicated is the fact that we're going to be using a special type of approach into Hartford Brainerd. And if we actually take a look at the available approaches real quickly, we have a choice between an LDA, which is basically an offset ILS, we have a visual, and we have a GPS or RNAV. We're definitely going to opt for this RNAV particular route. Now, here's a problem we're going to have. If we use this RNAV, it's going to be using the initial approach fix of Thumb, Madison, or Snivel. Unfortunately for us, that all three of those points, there's Thumb right there, I believe that Madison is right here, and I believe that Snivel is over here on the left. All of these three are going to be backwards to where we're going to be. So for example, if I wanted to use Thumb as my initial approach fix, I wouldn't actually be crossing Hartford VOR. What I'd be doing instead is going to Thumb and then taking basically a left-hand turn until we can actually locate We Got, which is going to be my initial approach fix. Then we're going to take We Got all the way down to the ground. One of the great things about this chart is you can see very, very clearly visually just the path that we're going to need to take in order to get us down. I mean, if we wanted to, we could come in here and add Lomas too, just because we can. You can see Lomas is actually another one of our waypoints. So that's all we have to do. Next thing you know, we want to go ahead and make sure the correct altitude. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than what we're used to. You'll probably notice this is this gigantic 42 right here in the middle. That's actually 4,200 feet. That is going to be our minimum en route altitude for this particular flight. Now, for us, since we're traveling in uh, IFR, we need to be traveling in even thousands when we're traveling towards the west. The next even thousand after 4,200 feet, naturally, is 6,000 feet, which is way, way, way too high for us for this particular flight. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to fly at 4,000 feet, which is still a little on the low side. The reason this number is so high is because you have to be high enough off the ground not only to dodge obstacles, but you have to be high enough off the ground to actually receive messages from the different VOR stations. Now for this flight, we're going to be using Groton VOR, traveling out here until we get to Thumb. We're going to know that we hit Thumb when we travel 17 nautical miles to Marine, 21 nautical miles away from Salem, and then traveling the last eight. I'm sorry, it goes eight, five, six. There we go. So we're going to be traveling a total of 11, 19 nautical miles away from this particular VOR. You can see the eight. You can see the five. That was 13. Another six on 13 is 19 nautical miles away to get to thumb. Sorry about that quick back of the envelope compilation. Once we've calculated that point there, we're simply going to go ahead and take a 289 course for 11 nautical miles until we cross the localizer for Hartford Brainerd. Again, we're going to be using an RNAV approach here. So what really is going to happen is when we get to Thumb, which again is going to be 19 nautical miles away from Groton, we're going to immediately switch over to a GPS approach that's going to take us along this little 291 radial from Thumb to we got, and then we're simply going to land the plane using conventional methods. Now, one thing that you're going to see that's really, really tricky is this RNAV approach is not lined up with the runway. As a matter of fact, it's substantially off from where the runway itself is. So you're going to see that as we start our descent here, the runway is going to be going this way. We're going to be going this way. So you're going to see that be drastically different. Other than that, there's really not a lot of other things I need to worry about as far as flight planning goes. If I wanted to get a little bit more sophisticated, of course, I could come over here onto a little nav map, something that a couple people were recommending. I used to always use Plan G for this purpose, and we could actually go ahead and recreate this exact same flight plan. So for example, I could come over here, I could set this as my departure, I could come up here, and I could set this as my arrival. 
let's say destination. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. We've already got the Cessna selected. 4,000 feet looks pretty good. One of the things I like is the fact it can do this calculation for you, which is super handy. We're going to be doing 4,000 feet. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Calculate. And no surprise, it came up with the exact same thing. The only difference, of course, is it's trying to take us to Hartford first before redirecting us all the way down to the Hartford Airport. Sorry, they're named the exact same thing. So what we could actually do is go over to our procedures, select one of these. In this case, like I said, we're going to be taking the GPS. And I can just go ahead and insert that one directly into the end. You see this crazy turn here? This is what we were trying to avoid by proceeding directly from thumb to we got. So in this case, I'm just going to go over to Hartford VOR. And I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And there you can see very, very clearly exactly what our flight plan is going to look like. We're going to take off. We're going to proceed direct. It's going to take us about 6.6 .6 nautical miles to get up to altitude. We're going to proceed to thumb. Again, that's about 19 nautical miles away. Once we hit that point, we'll be taking that left turn, intercepting the RNAV approach, and then just bringing the plane all the way down to the ground. In the event that something goes wrong, our missed approach procedure is going to take us right, pretty much right at the edge of Hartford. We're going to take a hard right turn and fly into a holding pattern right over a beautiful Coventry, Connecticut, near where Heckler Field is. It's actually visible from the air. It's kind of cool. So that's basically all there is to part one. Another thing we want to be doing, of course, is that we want to be thinking about calculating things like fuel. We want to be calculating things like our go speeds and all that. But like I said, one of the reasons I pulled this tool out is when you are IFR planning, much of that is going to be done by your company anyway. They're going to be calculating all those things for you. Your job is basically just to kind of dial in all the critical details that you're going to need and then go ahead and go ahead and do it yourself. In this case, another neat thing about this tool, and again, you can do all of this just as well over by hand or you can do this over in Sky Vector, is I can actually sit here and say, well, we want to print the flight plan. You can go over here to a print preview real quick and you get yourself a pretty darn decent copy of this. In this case, I can see this is going to be roughly my ground speed. It's going to be 102. If you're wondering why that's so low, it's because we have such a strong headwind today. Coming down here, I can see exactly how much fuel I'm going to need to have. And you have this glorious document here, which is going to provide you with everything you're going to need to know as far as times. The big thing for me is since I'm going to be measuring distances instead of times, it's basically going to be more of a matter of, you know, did I go fast enough to hit my particular waypoint at a specific time? I'm going to be less concerned about trying to find an object on the ground, and I'm going to be more concerned with trying to keep everything concentrated, make sure my distances are set correctly, and stuff along those lines. All right, now next time we'll go ahead and take this one for a flight. I think you'll find that this is a relatively simple flight compared to some of the ones we've done before, and it's just a matter of uh, making sure you have good instrument skills as well as taking the time to set up the aircraft. Enjoy.